Perfect. Awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming. And thanks to Floyd for helping organize and, and everything. Um, yeah. So I'm Jutton. I'll be talking about uh, real time circuit circuit simulation today. Um, Glad's working there. So uh, yeah, I was putting this talk together and I realized that usually when I'm giving talks like this, it's often to a room of people who usually know me a little bit or at least know a little bit about what I do. And I realized that here, most of you don't know me. Uh, I just started coming to these meetings last November and then I, I only made it to one of the in-person ones this spring. So uh, I figured I'd introduce myself and a little bit about what I do. And I think that'll give some context, which will help uh, later in the talk. So uh, I'm Jutton, I'm from Denver. Uh, after I finished high school and everything, I, I moved to Los Angeles and went to USC for a few years um, and studied electrical engineering. And then I was at Stanford for a couple of years studying music, science, and technology at the, uh, well, everyone calls it Karma, but it's got a long name. Um, <laughs> and then uh, for about a year, I was working at Tesla as an audio test engineer, which was a lot of fun. And then since then, I've been working as a freelance audio software developer. And then uh, last uh, August, my partner and I moved here to Seattle and really been enjoying it here. So I'm glad to be here. Um, so I'll be talking today a lot about audio or music software, which is mostly what I work on in the day to day, uh, in my day to day work. And mainly what I mean by this is like, Music or a software that's meant to be used as part of like a music production process. So maybe this will be like someone's home studio. Uh, usually it's in a bedroom, so we call it a bedroom studio. Uh, maybe it's in like a professional recording studio where like you two and Katy Perry go to record or something. Uh, or maybe it's part of a live performance, like if people have their laptops on stage with them, or if they're using like a synthesizer or a guitar pedal that has some software running like on an embedded uh, chip inside there. So yeah, these days there's lots of, uh, there, there's basically three kind of uh, deployment scenarios for this type of software. Either it's on a desktop computer like this one, or it's on like a mobile device. So a lot of folks these days are using iPads and iPhones as part of their music making process. Or uh, like this picture on the left here, that's a guitar pedal called the uh, Arrow DSP Quad Cortex. And it has some uh, Shark DSP chips that are running some software on there. Um, so those are kind of the three like, deployment scenarios. And uh, if you listen to people talk about music software, you'll often hear these terms plugin and host. And the idea there is that maybe you have some software that we call a host, which is audio application or a DAW. Um, that's what we would think of as like a virtual recording studio. And then you would want to bring your own gear into the recording studio. So those would be like your plugins. I'll give an example of that in a minute, but like uh, on the right there, we have uh, GarageBand, which a lot of people probably know. And then that screen in the middle with all the guitar pedals, that would be like a plugin that is running inside GarageBand, but is not necessarily made by the same people as GarageBand. It be made by any other software developer. <laughs> so you might be thinking, well, where do circuits fit into all of this? Um, Part of the work that I do is what is called virtual analog modeling. The idea there is that you have some physical device that has an analog circuit inside it. So uh, here on the top right, we have a guitar pedal called the Flan Centaur, which is all analog circuitry inside. Um, and sometimes people want to make a digital emulation of that circuit so that they can use it as part of their music making process on their computer. And that's what we see on the, the bottom there. That's a plugin that is uh, modeling the sound of the original Fawn Centaur. And there's a few reasons why we typically want to do this. So first, uh, a lot of older analog circuits are kind of old and rare, like uh, a friend of mine studies uh, a certain type of compressor that uses uh, vacuum tubes that are no longer being made. And the people who know how to repair those types of circuits are slowly dying out. And so, uh, if we want to be able to preserve that sound so that people can continue using it in the future, probably the only way to do it is to, uh, or maybe the simplest way to do it is to make emulations of that type of circuit so we can keep using it. Um, a lot of times cost is a big reason. So the Plon Centaur costs like $10,000, I think. It's a, yeah, it's insane. Um, <laughs> but some of the, the plugins out there are like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. I think some are free.
Right. So the question is if the Klon Centaur is worth that now or when it was marketed. Uh, that's what it's being sold for now. So when they were originally making them, I think they were like 250 bucks or something, uh, which was expensive for the time. Uh, so I think they they stopped making them in 2005, I want to say. And since then, the price has just climbed. Uh, it's it's kind of nuts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's a lot cheaper to make and ship software a lot of the time. So uh, cost is a big reason for people who, who want to buy these types of things. Um, a lot of times it's more convenient. Like I have a tape machine at my house, but I can't really take it with me if I want to go play a show somewhere because it's heavy and it breaks down all the time. Uh, but if I have something that sounds just like my tape machine on my computer, then I could just take that with me and it's way easier. Um, and then for me personally, I really like studying this because it helps me understand uh, how these circuits work and people who were designing them, like what they were thinking when they were trying to put all these circuit components together. Um, so that that's part of what I try to get out of this process as well as try to learn a bit about how people were making, you know, guitar effects and synthesizers and things like that. Uh, and then maybe I can use it uh, either to make my own circuits or to make my own digital uh, software. So, so yeah, uh, time for a little demo. So yeah, if you've been here, you've been hearing this little uh, guitar snippet. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can put the microphone somewhere that that make it. Uh, oh, I feel like that could probably make a feedback. Maybe yeah, I won't do that, but yeah, just uh, if you're at home, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure I'll be able to get the audio to you, but um, what I've got here, this is the, the plugin host that I use. This is called Bitwig Studio. Yeah, it's made by some folks in Germany. Um, and uh, this here is a little guitar track that I got from a friend of mine who runs a uh, studio where they mostly record like metal and uh, various types of rock music. Uh, and so what I'll show you guys here is a little plugin that I've been working on for uh, about a couple of years now. Um, and the idea with this plugin is that it's like a guitar pedal board that you could kind of build for yourself. So for example, uh, I could make a, or I could, I could add a pedal here. So for example, I'll add uh, this pedal. So this is a distortion pedal. So we can uh, distort the guitar if we want uh, and we can, make it sound different. Uh, yeah, so that's like you know, turning the knobs on the pedal kind of. And then part of the way that I 